Hi everybody, welcome to the Manifold Channel. Today we're going to see something really dramatic. We're going to see how 1,280 GPU cores running in parallel can do in two and a half minutes what would take days in uh, Esri ArcGIS software. That's a pretty big claim, so let's see how that actually works out. Uh, we're looking at Manifold Viewer here, and we're going to do this in free software, no less. Manifold Viewer is completely free. It's the free version of Manifold System Release 9. It's the read-only version, but it has full CPU and full GPU parallelism as well. We're going to open a file here. It's a Manifold project, and it's right here. It's this Crater Lake uh, LiDAR uh, project, which, which you can see is uh, 4 gigabytes. It's a big file. Let's see how long it takes to open. One, two, three. Click open, and it's done double click on the map and as you can see it opens instantly. That's uh, four gigabytes of LiDAR data which is uh, approximately uh, one meter resolution terrain elevation data that shows the region around Cra Crater Lake, Oregon in the United States. We're going to zoom in to take a better look and we can see this has a uh, phenomenally detailed uh, data. This by the way is the same uh, data set which uh, or similar to the data set which Esri uses in their blog entries on the uh, so-called mean curvature function. We're going to use mean curvature here to uh, learn some things about the surface and then to enhance the uh, visual appearance of this uh, hill shaded surface. Uh, and uh, to see how all this goes, let's see what we're working with on, on a machine uh, as a machine here. I'm going to click Help About. And you can see this is not a particularly expensive machine. This is a very simple machine. It uses a $85 processor, an AMD FX 8300, eight core processor. That's a very old AMD. It's not the, the latest Ryzen. Uh, processors that they have. That's, uh, like I say, you can buy that CPU these days for about $85 on Newegg. It uses a GeForce GTX 1060 um, GPU card. Uh, that's a very middle of the road card. Uh, gamers would think it's not much of a card. It's a, you can buy one for about $240, $250 on Newegg. It produces, uh, it delivers 1,280 GPU cores. And we've got uh, 32 uh, gigabytes of RAM here. So this is a kind of a middle of road system. It's not a particularly hot system, uh, but it's uh, good enough for what we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to run the uh, so-called uh, uh, mean curvature uh, calculation on this surface. And I'm, I'm going to launch it right now. We're here in, uh, in the map looking at this uh, crater-like surface. I'm going to click on the contents pane, shift to a transform. And here in transform, I'm going to pick uh, curvature mean. And for a radius, and we'll learn in a moment what that what that does. For the radius, I'm going to use a radius of three. This is something that uh, Esri cannot do. Uh, Esri uses a radius of only one for a three by three mat matrix. A radius of three uses a seven by seven matrix. And uh, let's fire this up and see how long it takes Manifold to do this. There, it's running right now. And remember, we're looking at a at a surface here, which uh, when you import it as a TIFF file, it's about a two gigabyte TIFF, so it's a very large surface. Uh, it's going to take us uh, slightly under two minutes for this whole thing to go. And uh, let's take a look at what's going on in the task manager. One of the things that we see here in the task manager is that it's launched the GPU, and in addition to using CPU fully parallel, it's also using the GPU. What's amazing, if you take a look here in the uh, compute display, is that a Windows reports that it's using 96 to 97, sometimes even 98 percent of the GPU. That means it's using 1,280 GPU cores. Now, how is it possible for uh, a Manifold Viewer, a free product, to uh, use so many cores? And the answer is, is that Manifold Viewer is uh, fully uh, parallel. It's actually running all eight CPU cores at the same time, and it's using those eight CPU cores to grab data and to dispatch that data to multiple GPU cores at, at the same time. Uh, it's, you really can't keep uh, over 1,000 GPU cores fed with data, as we see right here, 97%. Uh, unless you're feeding them with a fully parallel process. And that's what Mansell is doing. It's using all those eight cores to uh, feed those GPU cores all at the same time. Now let's take a look at what we're actually computing here. Uh, we're, we're getting information on how curved the surface is. And there's a variety of ways of doing it, but one of these ways is, is what you would call mean curvature. If this shape down here represents uh, the curvature, the curved surface that we're looking at, we're looking at just a little bit of it, not all uh, two gigabytes worth of it. Uh, we can see that it's curved in two directions at the same time. It's, it's curved in one direction like this, and it's curved in another direction like that. And what mean curvature does is it looks at, it finds the direction in which the surface is most curved. For example, in this case, it's this direction here, x1. You can see if you wrapped it around that cylinder right there, that's, that's a very tight radius there. So the, the surface is very curved in this direction. 
uh, and uh, it's curved, less curved. Oops, the process is done already, but let's keep on talking about uh, what we're doing here. And if you look at, you find that the direction in which the surface is least curved, that would be in this direction here, where it's kind of curved more gradually. And so what manifold does, what, what mean curvature calculation does is for each pixel, each point of the surface, first it finds the most curved direction and the least curved direction, and then it averages the actual curvature of the two. Now the way it does that, uh, to tell which direction the surface moves, it, has to, it can't look at just a single pixel, it has to look at least some adjacent pixels. And uh, for a curvature, for a radius of one, which is what, uh, a radius of one, which is what Esri uses, uh, it computes the uh, curvature based on uh, this three by three matrix here. This is the central pixel and it looks at the, the pixels immediately adjacent. If we picked a radius of two, it would go two pixels out or this uh, five by five matrix right there. If we chose a radius of three, which is what we chose for this computation, it goes all the way out to here and it chooses all, it goes all the way out and compares all these pixels here. So it computes how the curve surface curves, making, making comparisons between the center pixel and all these other pixels as well, which is uh, seven by seven, or that's uh, 49 pixels. That's a way bigger calculation than just doing the simple, you know, radius one, three by three computation. Let's put that away, and uh, let's put this away, and let's see what the result was. It created the surface right there. Let's see how long it took it. View, panes, log window. It took it 121 seconds, or uh, let's call that two minutes even, to uh, perform this computation. And the result, if we open this up, we're going to take this surface that it created, and we're going to drag it and drop it into the map of the surface there. Well, initially that's not very exciting. It's all black. Uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, style that to uh, adjust the channels and we're going to do is we're going to use an auto contrast and medium. This is a uh, floating point data here so what Manifold does is it calculates what all the pixel values are and then it calculates how to display all that within a range of uh, outputs uh, from 0 to 255 and in this case I've told it to use medium auto contrast so it's going to uh, spread the, the the uh, computations that it does into those, into, into this range. Then we click up st Update Style. We see what it actually produced. And zooming in here a bit, it's showing us uh, different uh, regions of maximum and minimum slope, maxim excuse me, ma maximum and minimum uh, curvature considering the mean curvature, that is the average curvature between the most curved and the least curved. Now, how could you use something like this? Because so far it sounds pretty dry, right? Well, the way you use it is you use it to enhance uh, the main image. So we're going to take the main image and going to drag that layer and drop it above here. And now here I'm going to, uh, in the layers pane, I'm going to change the transparency of that top layer, that's the colored layer, to let some of that uh, mean curvature image shine through. I'm going to give it a transparency of 80. And when I do that, you can see that this uh, curvature here that we uh, com computed is starting to shine through in spots and we're seeing more detail than we otherwise would have. Uh, for example, here in the rails. What I'll do is temporarily I'll tr turn off the background layer. So now you can see the original uh, tr hill shaded surface without the enhancement from the rails. You can see, like for example, this rail right here is kind of softer. When I turn that back layer, ground layer on, so it's seen through the transparency, you can see how you see more detail, uh, like the terracing effects that are, are right here on the uh, rim of Crater Lake. You can see more detail in the various lava flows from Wizard Island and you can see all the uh, better detail here in the uh, lava flows that are in the uh, uh, at the bottom of the lake. Uh, what we've done here is we're using uh, three by three. Excuse me, we're using a radius of three, which generates a seven by seven matrix, and uh, we've we've used that to uh, provide more enhanced detail in this image. You can see also here, for example, in this uh, in this mountain you know, the greater ridges and all that stuff. It's bringing out more detail where there's sudden changes in curvature. For example, here along the rim, where you can see all the terracing effects. Now, all that is very cool, but I made some claims here about how, how long it would take different software packages to uh, achieve this, uh, this sort of uh, performance. So let's take a look at what sort of timings we get. I've taken the liberty of, of uh, running this uh, several times in different sessions, and uh, I have... Uh, recorded those timings here. If you look at how fast Manifold does a radius of 1, which, uh, to remind everybody, let's put this back up here. A radius 1 is, is this simple calculation that does a 3 by 3 matrix, so it's only looking at 9 pixels. 
Uh, if you do that by default manifold, it takes it about 73 seconds. That's, with, that's automatically using GPU parallelism and CPU parallelism. If we uh, turn off GPU parallelism, uh, manifold does it in 84 seconds, or just uh, s takes slightly longer. Why is there not much of a difference with radius 1 and radius uh, between uh, using GPU and not using GPU? That's because the computation when you're only doing a 3x3 three three matrix is so simple, it's so trivial mathematically, that you really don't have a chance to bring a GPU into play. It adds a little, but not all that much. If we turn off parallelism entirely, and we just use uh, one CPU core at a time, it takes it about 415 seconds. So that's what, about seven minutes. Uh, so that's, say, one minute uh, fully parallel, seven minutes uh, not at all parallel. And this is the timing that you get if you run uh, mean curvature with uh, ArcGIS with Esri. Uh, what you're really doing here is because the, the computation is so simple, you're really doing a very simple constant computation, but because you're doing it on two gigabytes worth of pixels, it takes a while. It takes manifold a while, it takes a little over a minute, it takes Esri a little bit longer, it takes seven minutes because uh, even though the computation is pretty simple, it's still taking it a while to do computation. Now let's take a look at what we're talking, uh, what we need for a radius of three. The radius of three is this uh, outer layer here, that's all these pixels. All, 40, all 49 of them, that's a 7x7 seven seven matrix. And that's a considerably larger calculation than the 3x3 uh, three three matrix here. Uh, Esri doesn't do radius 3 parallel uh, cal computations for uh, means. It only does uh, uh, radius 1. And uh, QD just doesn't do uh, radius 3 at all either. Uh, if we look at how long it takes manifold, it takes it in prior runs, it took it 113 seconds. I was busy doing other things at the same time, so it took it 123 seconds. Let's call it two minutes. If the estimated Esri equivalent, Esri typically takes about 35 times longer for this level of calculation than it does to do it this way. So if you take 415, multiply it by 35, that gives you the number of seconds, divide by 60 to get the number of minutes, you get 242 minutes. In other words, it takes Esri four hours to do what Manifold would take and does, uh, does in only two minutes. Uh, a radius 5 computation, uh, we could run it here. Uh, also doesn't take much longer because it's very math intensive. That radius 5 computation is really huge. It's uh, an 11 by 11 matrix, or that's uh, 132 cells. And uh, that only takes manifold 152 seconds. You can see when I computed it right here, uh, it took 152 seconds. Uh, if you multiply this number here, 242 by 35, which gets you that scaling, the estimated Esri equivalent is about five days. Uh, so you can really see what an enormous difference uh, GPU uh, parallelism uh, brings when, when, you're, when you're making uh, significant computations. You really can do, in about two and a half minutes, what takes uh, days without a uh, GPU. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, presentation. Uh, go out and get a copy of Viewer. It's, uh, it's free. You can download it. It takes, uh, there's uh, absolutely uh, no strings attached. You don't have to register. <coughs> you don't have to pay anything. It doesn't time out. There's no advertising, there's no nagware, doesn't ask you for donations, none of that stuff. You just get user uh, viewer and use it for free, and you get full GPU parallelism. Now, to import a project like this, where you import the TIFF, a 2 gigabyte TIFF, it'll take you a while to import. It'll take you like 5 or 10 minutes to import it into uh, uh, Viewer, because uh, Viewer is not, uh, it's read-only. You can't save this project. If you want to save this project, uh, and uh, projects like we created here, for example, open this project here with prior runs. Uh, that's 16 gigabytes. Let's see how long it takes for you to open that. It opened it instantly. And uh, this is what the curvature looks like if you uh, do it with uh, a radius of 5. Actually, I'm, I'm I still have to format that. But these are where all the timings came from, where we actually recorded the various uh, timings. Uh, uh, if you uh, store these things in a manifold release 9 format, you need a copy of release 9 to do that. You can then open the resulting uh, map files and work with them and move them around instantaneously the way we've done here, even though they're like 16 gigabytes in size. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Go out there and get yourself a GPU card, even a cheap GPU card uh, that costs you $85 will still let you do this sort of thing in just a matter of uh, you know a couple minutes. Um, get the GPU card, get viewer, and get going and enjoy it. And uh, thanks for watching, and goodbye from uh, Manifold Land. Well, that was fun. Uh, if you want to see more, visit us at www.manifold.net. Uh, as always, Manifold delivers the world's most advanced, highest quality spatial products for GIS and DBMS at a low price that you can afford. Once again, that's uh, manifold.net. See you soon.